What's up, folks? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I want to talk about two releases by OpenAI that kind of caught my eye. One of them is called Canvas, which is, you know, OpenAI's approach to having this dual window style development system where you develop documents with ChatGPT. And there's a bunch of interesting features that, that were added to the main interface that I want to talk about. And the second one is OpenAI's real-time API that they introduced in the OpenAI Dev Day that happened in San Francisco a few days ago. And I'm really excited about these two. I thought they were really interesting and I uh, want to talk about it with you. So let's get into it. So the first one is Canvas, a new way of working with ChatGPT to write in code. So it's pretty cool. It has uh, essentially what you get is this uh, dual screen area in ChatGPT, similar to artifacts in Claude. However, this is not for, you know, rendering apps in real time like you do it in Claude and artifacts. What you're going to be doing is you're going to be working through documents and it's going to be this very interesting dynamic style of interaction where you can, you know, have... Uh, comments by ChatGPT with suggestions for improvements similar to Google Docs and you do some cool stuff and I want to uh, kind of try it out with you folks today and let's do that so I'm going to move on to ChatGPT yeah right now since this thing is in beta you click on uh, GPT-40 with Canvas if you have it uh, you know, if you have access I, I don't know if everyone has access right now they're rolling out this feature so we'll see uh, and let's just write something up. So write an essay about how to leverage large language models to study languages. Uh, write it in Markdown. Okay. So now hopefully what's going to happen is there you go. We get this wonderful little double window here that you can see. And the model is creating the document. It's talking about some issues and some stuff, which is, okay, so it's very interesting. And what's going to happen is that as soon as it finishes, there you go. Now you get some interesting, some interesting things. Let me move it over, move myself over here. Now what we get is we can click over here and suggest edits. And then we have adjust the length, reading level, uh, add a final polish, add emojis. I mean, I don't know why add emojis is here to be completely honest, but it's interesting. Now, let's see what happens when we, like for example, select this region. We can come over here and we have Ask GPT. We can do some formatting and we can um, edit this by prompting the model with something like make this introduction with two paragraphs extending a bit and giving more context some random thing now what we're gonna see is that specific region gets rewritten i actually uh, built recently a prototype that does like a similar thing and i think it's kind of cool that i see this idea of like working in blocks already inserted in interfaces like ChatGPT. So I really like this thing. I think it's the right way to go because imagine if you're, uh, if you're uh, writing a research report, right? If you're writing an article, whatever. You don't want, since you can prompt models now, since you can prompt models now, just like you can prompt them to write code for you. It's nice if you can do that by blocks, which is how we write code today if you were you know, in a cursor or VS Code editor, etc. So I like this by block approach. I also like the fact that we can um, we can come over here and we can say suggest edits, right? We can click here, and now check it out. Now ChatGPT itself writes suggestions for edits to the essay that come over here on the right. Like consider adding a hook, so I can say apply, and now the hook is going to be applied to that specific region. Uh, here I can say you could provide a brief example of each method. I can say apply and then that's going to be applied to that specific section. So I think this is the way to go when it comes to interfaces for uh, developing documents and working on stuff. So I really love this. I think this is a really cool idea. Okay. And, um, and there, there's other stuff here that we can play around with, like adjust the length. We can say keep the current length or we can say shorter. Uh, so let's go shorter. Okay. 
So now we're gonna see the whole document get rewritten to a shorter version. And that is pretty neat. The fact that we can have these primitives like making it smaller, you know, expanding it, expanding upon a specific section, perhaps introducing stuff within a section, etc. Um, I was thinking about something like this a while ago, so I'm really happy to see this thing already being uh, in the UI. Uh, we can also adjust for reading level, so you can click here and we can say, I don't know, uh, we can go down to like my reading level, which would be kindergarten. I think I'm, I'm like between kindergarten and middle school. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So we can say middle school. And now we're gonna see this get simplified. And that's, you know, that's pretty interesting. Um, I wonder which primitives are ideal for keeping here on the right. Like for example, I don't think adding emojis is like paramount to be like a primitive, like maybe it could be something we can ask like a command, but I don't think it should be here. However, polishing, reading level, adjusting the length, suggesting edits, and then being able to automatically apply them. I really do like these options here in the document. And you can do the same thing with code. Like if I come here and say, write a simple uh, Python script to analyze some fake uh, time series data. So now we're gonna see a document be generated, which is in Python. And there's some interesting stuff here. For code, we get comments, just like we did with the document. We can add logs, we can fix bugs, we can port to a language. So you can say, okay, I want this in JavaScript, TypeScript, Java, Python, C++, PHP, whatever it is. So I, I think this is freaking awesome. And we can do code review, which we just click it and then there's going to be code review upon the code itself, which I think is really cool. What I would like to see is uh, uh, this code review system be connected to a system for visualizing the results of whatever you're running here. So I would like to see, for example, in this context, the uh, dashboard with the plot. And then upon a code review, be able to visualize what's going to happen to that dashboard before, after the, the code review, etc. Something to think about. But yeah, ChatGPT with Canvas, I think it's a, it's a great addition. It adds a new layer to ChatGPT that I think people are really going to enjoy. I've been, you know, kind of excited to play around with and see what kind of stuff you can do with it. And um, uh, one thing that I haven't tried is generating images. So let's say... Uh, generate an image of a scientist building a robot, whatever. It's super creative example. So I don't think this is going to use the canvas feature. Yeah, because we can already click on the image and then have these editing features in uh, DALI 3, like select an area to change or download the image. So so as far as image generation, we still have the same thing. Okay, pretty cool. Second thing, which I'm more excited about to tell you folks, is the new real-time API. I mean, folks, I tested this yesterday, and it's, it's, so, it's so cool. It's the coolest thing. It's so cool. I can't even, like, it's just the coolest, all right? I don't know how many times I'm going to say coolest, but it's freaking cool. So... So it's a public, it's in public beta right now and essentially allows you to do super duper fast voice conversations with ChatGPT. Plus, and that's my favorite part, plus function calling fast. Plus fast function calling. Uh, essentially, they're introducing audio input and output in the Chat Completions API to support use cases that don't require the low latency benefits of the real-time API. With this update, developers can pass any text or audio inputs into GPT-40 and have the model respond with their choice of text, audio, or both. To get started is really simple. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hop over to my to the OpenAI real-time API docs. So here's the OpenAI API overview. Okay. And in the overview, they discuss a little bit about how to implement this in your you know JavaScript project in your whatever React project, etc. The easiest way to get started with this is if you click here on Get Started with the Real-Time Console. So I'm clicking here. You get uh, directed to this GitHub repo that's essentially a React project 
where it's super easy to get started. All you got to do is come over here and copy the URL to the GitHub repo and then open up a terminal. If you don't know what a terminal is because you're a super duper beginner in life, it's uh, just a thing that allows you to run commands on your machine. In Windows, you can use PowerShell. In Mac, I'm going to be using uh, my terminal iTerm2. And if you're in Linux, you're big bad boss and you know what you're doing. So I'm going to just say git clone and I'm going to put that link here and then it's going to clone. And now I'm going to go over there and now I entered and now all I have to do is say NPM I. OK, and that's going to set up the project for me. Beautiful, beautiful. And all we got to do is run NPM start just as they indicate here on the GitHub repo. OK, and what's going to happen is it's going to open up this wonderful UI here. There you go. And I already have it kind of set up. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to click on connect. There we go. And folks, I hope you're listening. If you can listen, I have no idea how to allow you to listen, which is kind of annoying. I'm going to, but essentially I can click here on push to talk and I'm going to request the weather in Lisbon, which is where I live. Okay. What's the weather in Lisbon right now? And as you can see here on the right, it's so good. It's so fast. That is amazing. That's, that's the coolest thing ever. Uh, folks, all right, this is insane. This is amazing. This is the coolest thing ever. However, it, it gets cooler because if you go here to the repo, they say that it's very easy to add functionalities to the real-time API. Essentially, you can um, very easily add new tools that you can activate through voice by just saying client.add a tool and then you give the schema of your tool. If you don't know what a schema is, it's essentially something that describes what the function you want the model to perform does, right? And obviously this function has to exist outside of this context so that the model can make a proper call to this function. And then you have to write the code that actually executes that function and performs the action. So in this case is uh, getting the weather. But what I did is I added the ability to browse the web with this functionality. So what we're going to do here is I'm all right, folks. So when I'm here in the uh, repo of the project, right? And if you go to source pages and then console page .tsx, right? Which is your regular, you got a regular uh, React project with TypeScript. And what you can do is if you go here to this session, you see where the model is adding all the tools for the project. So you see there's a tool for creating a memory for the model, which we're going to demonstrate in just a second. And then there's another tool for getting the weather, which is connected to that map that we just showed a while ago. And what I did here, I added a tool for searching Google. So essentially, I just added uh, the schema for the tool. It's called Search Google, performs Google search with the Serper API. If you don't have the Serper API, I'll leave a link in the description. Just go there and check out and set up your API key. You have a bunch of requests for free. And then you just set up the function to run the search. So what's cool is that now when I go here and I, I run the project again, I'm going to go npm start, open up that wonderful page and connect. Super amazing. And now I'm going to push to talk. I'm going to request the model to browse something on the internet. Like, can you check out online about the new OpenAI real time API? And folks, as you can see, the model made a search and is responding amazingly in super fast. So it's, this is so cool because it's so fast and it's, absolutely amazing i'm really i'm impressed i'm happy i'm gonna make fun stuff with this thing you can even request you can even add special functionalities like i added yesterday like something to make drawings that you can generate svg images with this model and then just visualize them in the browser there's a bunch you can do with it i think it's really cool so definitely check this thing out it's pretty neat and for today that's it thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and see you next time Cheers.